Hello all. Well, we're just out on a wee excursion today. Uh, I'm going to uh, in the car and going for a good drive around the mates with us. We're going to do a little bit of exploring, or at least as much as we can, uh, within the daylight hours, because this is uh, 3rd of January 2022, so the daylight's kind of limited. But uh, I'm planning on doing a, a fair bit today. But I've stopped off at this layby on the A985, and behind me is the Tuleys standing stones, ancient standing stones. I've done a video on this before on my channel, so if you want to have a look at that, feel free. Uh, you can get a nice view of the uh, Grange Month oil refinery out in the distance, that's on the 3rd of the 4th. And we're heading over that way, um, because we're going to be having a look at some old Delic buildings and that today, hopefully. Um, we're going to, at this stage, once I've stopped off here, I'm going to then continue along the A985 and have a look at the old what's left of the old Long Gannet power station and I'll get some footage of what I can of it and then perhaps later on I'm going to head to a place in Fife I'll get the name of that for you in a moment uh, and then it's going to possibly have a look at the Kokkanji power station which is on the A1 just on the, heading to, on the southbound part of the A1 so it's kind of east of the Edinburgh as well. So. But anyway, that's the standing stones, truly, truly standing stones. I'll turn it around and I'll give you a closer look at that here, okay? So that's Grainsmouth Oil Refinery in the distance across the Firth of the Forth and we'll be driving over the Kincardine Bridge in order to pass through that way Yeah, so the other place I'm going to drive forward <laughs> drive to after here when I go along to uh, Long Garnet Power Station I'm going to head across to the Kincardine Bridge and have a look at uh, it's the Bangawa Village Hospital it's an old Delic hospital I haven't been there before I got a uh, reference to it from a mate and meeting somebody else across here it's also likes doing ex explorations as well around about old Delic mountains so it's a Bangawa Village Hospital I'm going to have a look at so, but this is like an all day thing so it's um, first stop is to have a look at these stones let's have a wee five minute rest and then I'm going to head along to the Long Gannet Power Station see what there is to see get some videos, pictures for you across the Carden Bridge to Bangower Village Hospital see if we could get in have a look at the area if we could get in great and the first time I'll uh, go to the Kokanji I think it's pronounced Kokanji Power station, which is closed down. It was an old coal power station, I think it was, on the A1, which is on the eastern side of uh, Edinburgh. That's the plan, anyway. So, I'll get as much photos and videos for you during our uh, excursion, I suppose you call it adventure, day out, drive out, whatever. Okay. Right, so on at the area where Long Gannet Power Station was, uh, certainly within this vicinity, there's nothing left as far as the power station is concerned, it's levelled. Um, I always remember the big chimney from oh, way back, 1992 and everything, I used to get, used to travel through to Glasgow on the coach, it was the X, I think it was X24 or something, or X54, it was a stagecoach, coach. That went from Dundee to Glasgow. It took a long route. It went through Fife and everything. And I remember it passing this way to go over the Carden Bridge. And I always remember passing the power station, seeing the big chimney with the flashing lights on it. it was sort of like strobe effect, flashing lights. Um, that looks like it's a bit of collapse. But uh, I think this is where the 
I mean, I never really did get to visit the power station when it was operational, unfortunately. I would have loved to have. But uh, there's real charts here. Um, I, think, I think that would probably would have served the power station. You see them there. And you can see, like, the flat land, I guess, and that's where the power station is in that sort of vicinity there. In the background, that's Grangemouth. Uh, oil thing, probably. Which I'm nice. Maybe just make that all up on it, I'm going to show you anyway later in a moment. Um, but for me, it looks like this is where it, where it was, and there's nothing left at all. Really. That the, a way bridge, it's a way bridge station. This old, I don't know about how to it, but it's in a delicate position anyway, and we'll have a look at that later. Um, yeah. Oh, God. I'll turn it around and I'll give you a, a view of what I'm seeing here anyway. So this is on the site, in the area close by where the Long Dunnet, uh, I think it was coal and maybe oil as well, coal and oil uh, power station. It was fossil fuel anyway, I know that. I haven't done much research into it, maybe do a caption on that later, I'll see. But I'll turn it in and show you anyway. <laughs> That's the refinery in the distance. So all that ground there, I presume that flat ground is where the, the power station would have been sited. And this rail, I'm sure it would have served it some, somehow, maybe for the coal or, or taking away waste or whatnot. Bio, I don't know if it was what was going on with it. I think it was coal or oil or it was maybe one or the other. Or convert it to coal later or something, I'm not sure. I haven't done much research into it, but this is this old cottage that's nearby. Don't know what that's got to do with it, to be honest, but I'm getting a photo and video on it anyway. I'll give you a look up here. <laughs> So I'm just heading along this way here to get a view of the old, the old Kincardine Bridge. There's a nearby farm as well. You look at this railway. So I can't assume that it's disused, this railway. So I just treat it as if it's a live railway. Um, because I never assume that they're, uh, well, <laughs> the closer in space, at least as though it's not been used for a while, but. I don't actually know for sure this area that well, so I'll just assume that it's still live because that's what you do if you're not if you're in doubt, just assume that it is still in use. So I'm gonna try and get a closer view over there for you. So I'm guessing this is a lot of the land where the power station would have been. Unfortunately, I didn't know it very well close up because I didn't get any tours of it. I would have loved to have, but I'm sure I did ask at one time, but they weren't doing them for the general public. You know, I had to maybe arrange it through something, but it didn't really happen anyway. I never will know. So, I mean, then, obviously, just taking great caution, because it may seem obvious that it's not in use, but I don't actually know for sure what's going on here, so I just still take a caution anyway. You know, it looks like it won't go far, which though it's never been used, it's still reaching plants in the roads and the rail, so. But I presume this would be for the shipping in and out fuel, waste maybe. Lots of stuff. I 
Right. So I'm just sort of making my way oh, puddles and everything. So time's a little bit tight because I've got other things to, to do. I'm on a little bit of a trail. Um sort of dip truck that runs parallel with that railway. Now I'm pretty sure it's there's nothing on it anyway. So I think but like you say, it's good practice. If not sure, don't just assume that it's still like like that with a and the lights go wire it may look like it's no use but if you're not sure just assume that it's live so I treat the railway the same I don't know because I don't really know this area but uh, let's go on here because I know that it's um I hope there's a power station it's actually close by it but thought some of the there's no buildings left that I would have liked to have uh, videoed for you no doesn't really seem to go far anyway. Uh, turn it around, I'll show you. So I'm actually going to go over there and have a wee look. So again, I'm just a steep caution because. Uh, So I think this is probably where it was, it's levelled. That wasn't overly long ago when I last saw this, it was just a few years ago. Uh, when it was a power station, I passed it on the main road. Not very much to see. Unfortunately, all gone. So that'll have to do for now, I think. So not a lot to see. I'm gonna get myself back in the car uh, and then make my way towards that Bangalore Village Hospital and see what there is to see there, and hopefully maybe get into the building. Once again. Oh, So I'll probably get over there and get a wee picture of some of that footage as well for you. Show you a little bit of that. Yeah, I've done a very quick Google search on the power station. Uh, it was started the construction in 1964. Uh, it was commissioned in 1973 and it shut down in 2016. Uh, it was a coal-fired power station. And I think there was gas as well at some point. It was a little bit, maybe converted to gas or something. So I'm going to have a wee look at this old building for you as well. <clears throat> Just on my way out. I'll try and get them here without slipping without getting jagged a bit because it's all jaggies, always the same, always jaggies when you're <laughs> typical. I don't think I'll be going in this room, it looks a little bit dangerous, but <sighs> oh, blue and jaggies, hang on. So uh, this is a very dangerous building, this one. Uh, very dangerous. So I don't really want to be going much further than this. Because that's just uh, about to collapse. And just any vibration or anything could cause that to collapse. So I'm not going to be going in there. Nah, I've seen enough here. It's a bit, bit risky. Woman heck. <laughs> so, I wasn't really <coughs> intend on going in this building anyway. I just happened to see it, so I thought I'd get a wee little something of it. Uh, the hole in the roof and everything, it's just. Stone built cottage, or bungalow, or whatever you call them. Cottage house.
Yeah. I don't know, I'll show you a little bit up here. So there's some still some stuff that's functioning here. Uh, I don't really know what that building is. That's, it looks like there's some sort of thing that's still being used for. It's a little bit of a public way bridge, I was. There's certainly a way bridge about here. Um, I see, I can't really be going into there because that's still in operation, whatever they're doing there. Scottish Power, you see they've still got some sort of induction centre, health and safety. So I read that from here. Health and safety matters at Loch Gannett induction centre, so there's some sort of training. That might have been part of the thing with the decommissioning process or something, I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to have to just make this brief because I've got other places to get to and I want to get it done in the daylight. So, right, so we're uh, heading to, was it Bang Bangalore Village, isn't it? Yeah. Bangalore Village Hospital. Uh, yeah, it was just a little bit, I looked at Google again, it was the, the power station where it was generating, it was uh, about 2.4, uh, no, 2,400 megawatts. Uh, it's just quick Google research. As you can tell, there's pilings of that were all connected to the national grid, which was a dead giveaway that there was a power station in this area. Certainly, that's the clue to it. But no, you look at it, nothing. So, so it's type of chat one. I'm maybe as I say, I'll do a little bit more research. I'll stick something on in text if we've got the time. But Bangor, Bangor uh, Village Hospital next up. See how we get on with that. And that's just where I came off the Kincardine Bridge that crosses over the 5th of the 4th. The Kincardine Bridge was opened, uh, I think I clocked, it was 1936, I think. Uh, Yeah, that's the old Kincardine Bridge that way, and you've got the new one just with that, uh, just up there, where I thought that lorry was going up. That's the new one. That opened in 2008. Now, I've not got the best view of that at the moment, because uh, I've not got time to do an awful lot more. I've got to get chapping on, so you can see in the distance here, the, the fire off the, that's the, the blow-off gas, I think, at the refinery, Grangewell refinery. So, the old Kincardine Bridge opened on 1936, that's what I went across. The new one opened just up there, 2008. Okay. Right, as always, slight change of plan, a wee deviation. I decided because we were nearby, I thought we'd pop in via Alexander Dennis. This is in Falkirk, that's the bus body builder. Originally they were bus body builders. Uh, they were originally called Walter Alexander. And I think in about the early 2000s it started to merge with the other bus companies, Transbus, I think, and then it eventually became what it is today, which is Alexander Dennis. And they do uh, body works and their own chassis as well. And Viro 200, Viro 400 double deckers, Viro 200 single deckers. I think it looks at uh, these things uh, going to be maybe hydrogen or something. Uh, it's close today, it's a bank holiday Monday, so there isn't much going on today. Uh, <clears throat> I'd love to get a tour here sometime, but at the moment with, uh, uh, with the way the, what's going on in the global uh, situation, it's a bit, you know, with Covid, it's a wee bit difficult to get tour, tours and that, so uh, I have to wait till things sort of uh, get back to whatever normal and then perhaps we'll get a tour in here sometime again but uh so yeah i'm just going to get a wee video and stuff around about the, the outside of the factory it's based in falkirk and the clarkmanshire district 
in Scotland, Clar Clarence and Shire, something like that. Um, it's right in the sort of built up area for it. So I'm going to turn this round anyway and I'll just show you a rough sort of the outside of the factory. <coughs> <coughs> where Alexander Dennis buses up. <coughs> okay, right, I've done it then. So these buses are in the process of being kitted out. Um, let's see, there isn't much going on today being a bank holiday. I'm still planning on going to that uh, Bangor village, but I just thought we would add this little detour into the day trip. So I'm not 100% sure what these models are, are or what they go. I think they're build your dreams, which is BYD, judging by the back action. The pattern, the design of the back action, it's not, really, it's not coming very clear on here, unfortunately. But going by that, I've seen that type of back, back action on the BYD. Uh, Chassis, which is a, a Chinese company, I think it is, and they do the electric, they build electric uh, buses mainly. Well, that's what they do now anyway, and I think that's the chassis. The bodywork will be Alexander, obviously Alexander Dennis. Um, but judging by what's on the roof, it looks like they might even be with the battery packs and air conditioning go. They might even be going abroad. I don't know. Well, they are the right hand drive, so. Uh, quite sure what the models are. So, this is like the main car park. For employees and that, that would obviously be a bad call on Monday. There's much, not much going on today anyway. So that's uh, a wee look around the outside of the Alexander Dennis factory. There isn't, as I say, much, but never mind. Showed you where it is. Uh, so maybe one day I get a tour inside, hopefully. Uh, but this is where the um, my favourite fleet of buses were built: the Dundee X Tayside Dundee HSR 36 to 50X. With Alexander RV type bodyworks, bodyworks part that we built here. So, but Dundee, the, the electric buses, the Bowser your dreams, BYD chassis, uh, these the chassis where they came to this factory. And just last year, the bodyworks where they've been built, because they've got Alexander Viral 400 bodyworks on them. So, that's the new Dundee. Our explored on the bus fleet that is going to be serving on the 28th service, 28 Douglas and Charleston services. So, the one that came from this factory, Alexander Dennis. Yeah, so this is your first time at Alexander Dennis, is it? <laughs> been on the buses often enough, but never actually been to the factory where they were built. Yeah. So I was here 20 years ago, I had a tour inside here, but then I, was, I just drove up casually and they just let us in kind of thing, but 
22 years ago, was, things were a bit different back then, you know. Uh, it's health and safety now. Everything's got to be done through appointments and arrangements and that. But I was lucky enough back then to actually get in there and see the buses being built. At that time, it had been Alexander, um, ALX, Body Works, Double Deck, so I say. Um, that's, that's the type of body work that was being built. As, long, as well as other models as well. The global market is also so. Uh, the domestic market, which is the Scottish, but the UK. And then we went to, uh, I think, we do buses for all over Hong Kong and that, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's big. Big, big market. Big factory, well known. But this is where it happens anyway. Right, we're going to make tracks for the Bangor Village Hospital, like planned earlier. It's 25, 20 to 2, so try to get as much daylight as we can. Yeah. Ah, so just before we go, I just took a walk up here and I was able to see some of the chassis that are covered in the background. And uh, <clears throat> I think we were discussing that these buses could be going to first bus in Glasgow and they're hydrogen buses. No. I've done it then, I'll show you this briefly then we'll, we'll get heading for the Bangor village hospital. So our chassis are covered up at the moment but unfortunately I know a lot of sea but they're Of course, being a bank holiday, there isn't much going on, otherwise you may have seen some of them moving around. The chassis moving in and out the factory, perhaps, but... So that's the Dennis part, Alexander, I think. They were originally the bodybuilders, and Dennis were originally the chassis builders, so they merged, and now they make their full uh, intricate body um, product, which is chassis and bodywork. That I've done here, but like I say, I think these the chassis are them. I think, judging by the back axle, it looks like the ones that are on the, the uh, BYD electric uh, chassis that we have in Dundee, and also the ones that are on the Edinburgh uh, Dundee service, the E1 service. Uh, I think it's Umber or something. Anyway, that'll do for now. So, we're going to be able to start making tracks for the for the next uh, stop, the uh, Bangor uh, Village Hospital. Okay, right, that'll do for them. Right, so in that Bangor Village, at least that's how I'd pronounce it anyway, you can see the sign. That looks like the hospital's old derelict buildings there. No, I don't think we're don't know if I'm going to get in or not because I did see like cars and that there, security, there could be development, I don't know what's going on. Obviously there are some sort of activities going on here, but uh, I'll show you what I could show you anyway, I'll turn it around and I'll give you a view of it. Right, so I'll give you a little bit of a view. <clears throat> That's just off the A89. The A8, the A89. So, I'm just going to see how, I don't know where it, I've not been here, I don't know where it's actually going to lead to, I want, what's going to happen. I'm going to head down there and just see what happens, see if we can get anything. So, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. Yeah, uh, I saw a trail earlier. That was leaning down towards this, the area, the site. So, but did you see anything? Yeah, so I sort of have a have a light down here. Um, not quite sure. Just where this leads to. Oh, no, cows. <laughs> Watch where we put in 
my feet because I don't want to be tripping up or sinking in a big load of mud. Oh, little bug near. See that? Oh, something there. Go uh, have a look at it. Yeah. Rubble. I'm slapping the ends. Oh. Highly flammable, so I'm assuming this will be the boiler room or flammable liquid. Ah, this is this will be probably for the heating. Um, storing the oil or Oil tank or whatever. Oh, I might get a head torch on, I don't know. Not much to see in here, but I'll get the head torch on anyway, see the brought it. <laughs> show you what, I'm going to show you. Right, let's have a look. Proceed with caution. Before I go in, I'll just check what I'm going to be putting myself in first of all. Uh, check the f ground to the floor. Just see what's here. It's in here, and any trap, booby traps or anything like that. I'm not going to trip over and grab on it and then pull half the bolt and all that because it's in a poor condition. Get all the light, yeah. Little yeah. switch. Little toggle switch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Final floor. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the letters. The nozzle switch. The fuses. So the thing is, the shadow of the camera at the phone is blocking the, the view, of course. Well, that's a bit annoying. Not a, not a very big bug, but something anyway. Not to the left. Yeah, not an awful lot of gear. Not much. Not much to see in there. So, uh, looks like there's other sort of, you know, what they are. I'm going to show you that close up. I'm not quite sure what these are actually. I'm guessing maybe storage, uh, so maybe, I don't know, if there was gas bottles stored in there and there was a structure, maybe, I don't know what that is. Well, it looks like that whatever was organised in a certain way and these cards that were in there, the cards that were on the boards, uh, that sort of thing on the wall, would be, presumably would be cards might be a card for each segment of the, whatever the if it's bottles or compressed beer, I don't know what the heck, but it's highly flammable, so it be something to do with fuel of some sort. But there's an old bottle. Oh, Wiseman milk carton. So I'll have a wee look over that way then towards the the other buildings. Although I don't want to be getting into any problems if there's any security there, I'll just go away. I mean I didn't actually have to climb any fences to get to here, so it's not really uh, Difficult to get in. Not that that makes it any more right, but there's a bug in there. Sort of head over in that direction. Oh, okay, that, took a, I was looking down there, yeah, there, but it's sort of like no, seeing this, there is a bit of a fence, but I was going to break it. 
Well, it's not covered over there, look. Just walk right in there. It's covered. Not climbing any fence to get in. Just gotta go through these blooming jaggies. <sighs> I'll find a way around, I'm sure. Just uh, thought I'd also point out the very unusual looking trees, as far as I'm concerned. As you'll probably know if you've seen my videos before, I log in some strange stuff. But anyway, let's go away this. Ah, we got to there. And then the security came. At least I assume it was. Because whoever it was stopped. And it's obvious they were going to come out and ask us what we were doing or what. So we just turned and went away. Failed attempt, we never got in, unfortunately. I didn't think we were because when I saw it at first, it looked like it was still activities going on. And uh, it's obviously quite secure. But I didn't give them the chance to ask us what we were doing because as soon as we saw them, we just casually turned away and headed back out. So it's a bit unfortunate. But we tried, we tried. I thought it was in for it there when I, I thought we were going to get in, but just heard the car coming up. That was it. Fuck. Damn it. Ah, used to that. Disappointing. Well, anyway. I can maybe just show you from the, the road, the public road, and just show you the buildings from what I showed earlier. Right, you even get along here, there's no point in trying to get back in again. We obviously know that we're here, so they're going to be looking out anyway, that's their job. So. Just going to have a peek over there actually, I'm not going there, but I mean, if we get a view of something over there then. Obviously, the, if they see us try to get back in, then they really will get annoyed and then they will say something. Uh, but not try to get back in the thing and just. I can't even bother showing this, there's nothing to see. Nah, nothing to see there. They're not about over there, but. It's a wee opening over there. I think it's maybe worth having a look over there, see if you see anything. Car, is it? It's the main road up there. It's just a wee open over there. It's the roads, the main roads, the public roads up there, you see. And that car, I guess, will have probably went through the gate, it says. No entry, basically. Hmm. Well, there's a building there, but that's that same car, by the way. So it's obviously this car circling that. This is scary. Yeah. Show you the building. And that's the road that the the security. Well, I presume it's security anyway. We're keeping an eye on it, doing what they're supposed to do. Well, fair enough, I can't really do any more than that. So, that's the way it goes. Um, so what do you want to do now? You can head back to Dundee and have a look at some of the... So Dundee today, the 3rd of January 2022. Uh, Dundee, Explore Dundee have launched... Well, not launched, but it's uh, they launched it. Uh, yeah, just before Christmas a few weeks ago, that was the official launch, but today is the day they're actually going into service on the 28th of it. So I might get uh, footage of that on these electric, all electric buses. Maybe the bus model as you'll know already if you've seen uh, all the videos regarding buses. <laughs> this is just a black day away anyway, so... Right, I'll keep you posted. I'll just video what I'm going to video, stick it on here and show you it and share it with you. So, the task now is to get myself back up there, get this off, jacket on, uh, jacket off, into the car, cross the fourth bridge, and back Dundee, and take it from there. I'll either get the videos of the electric buses and put it on this video, 
or I'll put it on in a separate video, I don't know. But I these are for perhaps a storage for that. Um, let's see what they are. Bangor Village. I presume then that if they're doing work on it, they will be secure. Unlike the Dundee Strath Martin Hospital, where the it's derelict. I mean, there's nothing going on at all there. It's a ghostly sort of site. But this one reminded me of it a little bit, if it wasn't for the fact that the turret is going on, uh, renovating it, I guess, for the new resort. But well, listen, I haven't done any real research at all into it. So maybe sure that I didn't saw these kills. That was an old building as well. I'll show you. Okay, in this section of the video, with a bit of stuck on the end of it, it's a wee bit of footage of Dundee's brand new fully electric buses. Now, earlier today we were at the Volvo, sorry, we were at the Alexander Dennis factory in Falkirk. They're the manufacturers that build bus bodywords. Originally they were what were Alexander and they built bus bodywords. But uh, fairly recently, within well, a few years ago they merged with Dennis and became Alexander Dennis so they now build full buses, fully integrated buses meaning they do the chassis as well Dennis tend to concentrate on the chassis a bit and Alexander was the more the body, body work but as, the, as you know they've merged now so it's Alexander Dennis so they do the complete bus but in this instance these electric buses are it's just the bodywork that's Alexander Dennis. The chassis, however, is BYD, which is an abbreviation for Build Your Dreams. And I believe it's a Chinese company, <clears throat> uh, based in Chinese. Uh, they do a lot of, obviously, global market, but they're uh, domestic. I think it's just one big factory that supplies the globe, I believe. I've not done a great deal of research into BYD. Because there wasn't very many around in the Dundee area. It's quite a new chassis. Um, a fairly new company, I haven't really heard of them until very recently. But today anyway, 3rd of January 2022, uh, is the first day that these new buses for Explore Dundee go into service. On the 28th, uh, Douglas and Charleston services. So I'm going to leave you with this footage. I took this footage inside and around the bus. Okay.
Yeah, I just had a quick look at Wikipedia about BYD. I don't know an awful lot about it. Uh, I haven't heard of it until very recently. But apparently it's been funded from February 1995 to the present date. Uh, they've got a few, quite a few factories worldwide. Uh, and there's about a quarter of a million employees that work with them. So it's a massive company. <clears throat> there's like two parts to it. There's uh, B BYD Autos and BYD Electronics. But it's uh, all, it's China, Chinese based. So um, there's a lot of like names in, that are in Chinese. I'm not even going to attempt to try and pronounce. <laughs> You're better off Googling it for that. But I just thought I'd add that little bit of information in anyway. Okay, enjoy the video. I'm just doing a wee Wikipedia Google search on this Bangor Village Hospital. I done virtually no research about it prior to that. Uh, it was just a suggestion, a place to go and visit to uh, for an adventure, hoping to get in. But we didn't get in. But um, anyway, and from what it says here, the uh, Bangor Village Hospital it was a psychiatric hospital, and it's located in the west of Dechmon, which is in West Lothian, not far from Edinburgh, basically. Uh, during the First World War, it formed part of the much larger Edinburgh War Hospital. Uh, just reading off of Wikipedia. Um, <clears throat> the hospital opened in 1906 and it closed in 2004. Uh, present use. The, host the close hospital was used as a filming location for the 2005 film the jacket starring oh, oh I can't even pronounce that Kira Knightley and Adrian Brody or something. Google it up and you'll get the 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 names. It's a film called The Jacket. <clears throat> so that was filmed there. Uh what else has it got here? I'm just sort of skipping through a lot here. During September two thousand and nine the hospital grounds were used as the site for Exercise Greengate, a counter-terrorist exercise run by the Scottish Government to test decontamination procedures in the event of a nuclear, chemical or biological incident. This involved 250 volunteer casualties and 400 emergency staff. Well, I didn't know that. Hmm, there's a lot of history with this. On the 1st of October 2015, planning permission for a resident and mixed use redevelopment of the former hospital site that has been sought. Application notes, blah blah blah. Right. Uh, in early 2020, it is confirmed that five of the listed buildings on the site were in very poor condition and were planned to be demolished, while the remaining 10 buildings were due to be redeveloped for housing. So that's what's going on, and I was uh, redeveloping it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you get. A, I just, as I say, I'm just reading this off. Uh, just cherry picking bits of information off of Wikipedia regarding Bangor Village Hospital. I didn't do any, any research really whatsoever prior to that. It was a suggestion from a, um, a fellow explorer. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it today, but me and the other lad went along and tried to. Uh, get in but we couldn't so there's me the other my other mate he's a, a explorer as well and the other guy unfortunately he couldn't make it so i think he knew the area better but we tried <clears throat> we couldn't push our luck yeah we weren't meant to be there but anyway that's just a little bit of information about it just a wee bit of information off of wikipedia okay Right, so that's his uh, back from my uh, big day out. It's a knacker now. <laughs> it's been a long day. Covered quite a bit um, from standing stones 
to bus manufacturers, to Delhi buildings, to, to sampling, build, uh, sampling buses. <laughs> right, so we're going to get this compiled up for you. Okay, thanks for uh, selecting it and hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.